Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our presentation on dressing for success and more in the virtual workspace. I'm Melissa Samuel, Director of Alumni Programs at the Albany Alumni Association. Yeah. Glad to join us. Um, before we uh, get into the presentation, I just wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items. On the bar at the bottom, uh, you'll see we're using the chat tab today. Feel free to introduce yourself and let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, we will also have the Q&A tab live today. So um, after Jeff's presentation, I figure that'll be about a half an hour, um, we will um, do some Q&A and we'll um, get to as many of your questions as we can. So uh, please make sure to type in any questions you have there, not in the chat, um, so we make sure that we see them. Uh, so now I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker today, uh, Jeff Snyderman. Jeff is class of 2003. He is the president and CEO of 11T USA, the Italian menswear luxury label. 11T is currently distributed in luxury stores across the globe. Jeff is responsible for managing territories in North America, United Kingdom, and Australia. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to have you. And I'm looking forward to gaining some insights on what should be in my background and uh, how I can be more successful in the virtual space. So welcome. Well, thank you for having me and good afternoon to everyone who's joining in. Um, it's always a pleasure to have an opportunity to reconnect with our university. Um, 11T has proudly hosted several events in our offices and showroom in New York City. I'm not sure if some of you have attended those in the past. I'd love to hear about that. If you can share in the chat, maybe we can talk about it a little later. Um, and what's interesting about today's discussion is to discuss style, but not style as a general uh, issue, but style from a work a necessity issue, which has taken over our lives today in so many different aspects. Of course, we're on a virtual call today, which some of us are getting more used to than others, um, depending on our professions, depending on um, uh, whether our offices or regions have reopened or different levels. And what my business has been fortunate for in the last several months is that our product, 11T's product, has always been most known for its casual but yet casually elevated style. Um, this is something that obviously has taken over um, many work from home aspects, as well as those offices that may have casually reopened. It's kind of a funny story because most men, specifically talking about men, uh, women seem to have a little less issue with this, but men specifically have a uncertainty of getting dressed in the morning. And what solved that uncertainty for so many years was the suit. The suit jacket matches the suit pant. You put on a white shirt, perhaps a tie or no tie, and you walk out the door feeling confident in what you're wearing. All of a sudden, our worlds have changed overnight where the suit is not only no longer necessary, it's no longer encouraged for presenting yourself in a workplace, whether that be virtual or in person. And now what? Now you have this large group of men specifically that are confused, unsure, and really looking for help on how to access confidence in themselves, uh, show respect to their clients or coworkers in these virtual meetings. And my company has fortunately, and I'd say luckily, been able to solve for many of these issues. So what I'd like to do is spend the next couple of minutes just telling you a little bit about 11T, uh, a little bit about um, our view and opinion on the virtual style workplace and how that has changed and how we're looking at that situation. Um, and then also talk a little generally about vi virtual video conferencing and some of the do's and don'ts that I've experienced over the last few months um, and just kind of share some hints and tips for success in that respect as well. I'm gonna share my screen now and hopefully you'll all be able to access and see it. There we are. The 11T Guide to Business Casual, the way we see preparing for the workplace, again, whether that would be virtually or in person, um, I'd like to start by just letting you know that our company's core values and what our foundation has been based on is a made in Italy production and fabrication. And many of you I'm sure have had wonderful opportunities to visit Italy. Um, of course, we cannot wait to get back. 
I know that I can't. Um, the food, or it speaks to craftsmanship. Um, the way that they take care of their generations and pass down traditions and crafts. Um, they're most well known in fashion for making quality products. And usually those quality products could be quite expensive. Um, in Eleventy's philosophy, we try to reserve as best as possible the craftsmanship and quality of made in Italy production and fabrication while also focusing on a responsible luxury price point. So interestingly, as I mentioned before, Eleventy is well positioned in today's world because of our casual aesthetic, but also because we work within the luxury sector, but at the opening price of the luxury sector. So for those customers that appreciate luxury quality and style, they can also easily identify uh, our value for price when they see the quality to the price point relationship. Um, of course, sustainability is a major aspect of our company's initiatives today. Uh, we're working with factories that use less water in washing processes, less chemicals in the dyeing processes, and many other initiatives that allow us to be globally certified uh, for our work in this area. Our founder, uh, Marco Baldessari, born and raised in Milan, um, interestingly, it was his idea to create this balance of elevated casual luxury. Um, he's always dressed in this particular way, and I'll show you on the next slide, um, some photos of him that were actually taken several years ago, which are exactly the way people are looking to dress today. So taking some tailored elements, but soft tailored, like a sport jacket in this case that has no shoulder pads, uh, no canvas in the chest, and mixing those instead of dress shirts, but with beautiful knitwear, sweaters that look elevated, but still sporty and casual for that perfect balance between professionalism and casualism. You'll even notice that on the suit he's wearing on the left, uh, the trouser, the pant that goes along with that suit is a drawstring pant. It's a jogger pant. It has elastic in the waist. It has stretch in the leg and the fabric. So again, ahead of the curve in some senses, but really focusing on comfort as the true explanation of luxury in our opinion. And what have we learned over the last few months? We all desire to be comfortable while working. Again, whether that's from home or in a casually reopened office. Our distribution today, uh, we're very proud that we're represented in every major luxury market across the world. Uh, and within those markets, some of the most important luxury retailers, uh, most notably in the UK market, um, uh, Selfridges and Harrods, probably two of the most important in the world. We have shop and shops at both locations sitting next to some of the most well-known luxury brands in the world. So. Um, this is something that we're very focused on for our distribution to be partnered with some of the best locations that are able to introduce our product to the right customers that appreciate it. So here we are, the 11 T guide. Um, you know, a lot of people are asking a lot of questions. Um, will a sport coat be too formal? Uh, do I have to wear a button down shirt when I'm, you know, on a call? Can I get away with wearing sweatpants is a kind of big joke that's gone viral, but actually, has been quite true. How do we balance that perfect professional style and comfort? And that's really what I'm going to talk about in the next few slides. So for the 11 T style, and again, this can be reinterpreted uh, into women's wear. Of course, there are many ladies watching and also into other brands and other aspects um, to make these combinations. But for the purpose of my expertise, I'm going to speak about our initiatives. The jersey jacket, the jersey sport coat. So this is probably the most important. Um, what I'm wearing today is a jacket that looks sartorial and formal in the shape, but in essence, the fabric is a stretch fabric. Um, it's 100% knit. So when you move, it stretches and almost feels as comfortable as a sweatshirt would be, but in the shape and relaxed look of a jacket. Uh, elevated knitwear, point number two. Uh, as you can see, I'm also representing that, but we believe very much that you know, to take away the seriousness of a dress shirt and tie, especially when sitting at home, perhaps at a dining room table or a living room or wherever the home office is located today, it's not quite natural to sit around your house all day in a shirt and tie or the equivalent of that dressed up in a formal blouse for women's. So we believe in the idea of elevated knitwear that allows you to feel comfortable, look a bit more relaxed, but also at the same time professional and show respect for how you're presenting yourself to your colleagues and coworkers. 
And lastly, the jogger pant. The jogger pant for us has really taken over our pant business. As I described earlier with Marco's suit, you know, this balance between athletic inspiration, but, but more uh, serious and formal fabrics, of course, with stretch always allows you to be comfortable and still yet look professional. And yes, I'll answer the question now because there may be in the chat already. I always dress from top to bottom when I'm taking a virtual call, even if my, you know, my, my view is only from the midsection up because it feels complete. It allows me to feel confident. It allows me to feel that I'm really getting ready for something that if I take it seriously, then people will take me seriously. So this is kind of my uh, back of mind. So when we're talking about this idea of elevated knitwear, you know, to me, a polo, okay? A polo is a perfect example. Every one of you owns a polo. The question is what type of polo? In, in our opinion, this polo should have some kind of intentional finishing details that stand out from a traditional golf polo or distressed or vintage polo. It should look a little bit more refined. Perhaps the fabric has a bit of a shine or a finish to it. Um, in this particular case, you can see that the tipping, the contrast tipping and color around the, um, the collar and also the sleeves adds a little bit of that modernity. Um, the buttons here in this case are also made of mother of pearl. So they function almost like a jewelry aspect. So it dresses up the materials. Um, these are some of the ideas that I would use the polo for today to replace the traditional dress shirt. The t-shirt, even a t-shirt can be considered dressed up today. Uh, but again, we're looking at a t-shirt that has, again, intentional details as the contrast collar, um, something that makes it feel a bit more updated, a bit more modern, that it's not just the, um, the undershirt now re reappearing under a jacket. Um, again, this is the similar jacket to what I'm wearing today, completely stretch. Um, it's a, this is actually a printed material. So this has um, a lot of fun to it because it looks like a, like a serious pattern, but when you start pulling on it, you can feel the fabric just uh, expanding like, um, like, again, like a sweatshirt. Hoodies are probably the biggest question mark. Um, in fact, I had a, a virtual call yesterday where someone was wearing a hoodie that looked like it was from gym class. Um, in our opinion, hoodies may be acceptable and can be acceptable if they are intentionally modernized and they have, again, some kind of finishing details. Uh, in, in this example, you see the mixed media hoodie. Mixed media meaning that the sleeves and the hoods are made of this uh, Egyptian jersey cotton, while the body of the hoodie is a trucker style, denim style jacket. And so you mix these two elements together for something that's modern and offers an athleisure expression, but still in an updated way. Um, pairing that hoodie back to an elevated knitwear, some kind of refined sweater underneath also helps it to stand up that it's not just a hoodie over a t-shirt like we may just wear when we're watching a movie on a Saturday night at home. And then lastly, the jogger pant completes the look to make it feel more like a trouser than as, than as an actual sweatpant. The athleisure hoodie is a, is a little different. And again, has these same elements that make it feel updated and, and, um, and elevated. Uh, for me, it's the drawstrings that are finished with a suede detail at the end of the drawstring. So not just finished in a knot, like maybe some, um, you know, some of our very casual hoodies that we would wear around the house. This has updated details. For example, the powder coated zipper um, gives it a modern feel. It's a fresh feel. And this is also the color blocking done at a V angle, allows it again to feel uh, intentionally um, updated as opposed to just another pullover hoodie. Um, so I think that that point is clear. And again, this one is paired with the upgraded t-shirt. So the underpinning of the hoodie becomes just as important as the hoodie itself. So keep that in mind. And probably my, my most favorite um, is the swacket. So yeah, swacket is a, a new vocabulary for a lot of you today. Uh, it's the idea of combining a sweater and a jacket. So it's a, a completely knit sweater material, but in the shape of a jacket, usually in a cardigan that allows you to layer it over something, whether it be the elevated tee, the polo, or anything else in that category, that it provides that kind of you know, jacket feel without the jacket restriction. So you have total movement, it's comfortable like a knit and sweater. So these are kind of ideas for layering at home or even in casually reopened office to give yourself that feeling of, of uh, confidence. Uh, you can see articles in every uh, fashion industry that you pick up every day about the suit. 
Um, as I said earlier, when I started this conversation, the suit has certainly died off, but that's in a traditional way. Um, in our view, there is still an opportunity to wear a suit in a softer way. So we believe in a suit that has you know, softer shoulders, less structure in the body, but more importantly, it's not the suit itself, it's how you mix the other elements in the outfit with the suit. So certainly we would not recommend wearing a dress shirt with the suit because that would be the traditional um, style that we're talking about no longer being relevant, but to put an elevated t-shirt a modern sneaker or designer sneaker, you know, these kinds of additions will help to make the suit feel a bit more relaxed and give you that feeling that you maybe you're just wearing a jacket and a pant that happen to match in fabric, but not feel as restricted or serious as a suit has in the past. Uh, here you can see just a couple of our certifications that we have for the company, um, but I'm going to stop to share and say hello again. Um, and I thought this could be an interesting moment to kind of talk about um, some of the other aspects aside from how you present yourself in your style, but also present yourself from a uh, virtual background, from a total setting, um, from, from preventing other distractions that may interfere with messaging and the purpose of your call. And I'll give you a perfect example. Last week, I had a call uh, with someone who wanted to sell me advertising. So... For me, it was a half an hour scheduled call that I was taking to be courteous, even if I didn't have a great intention to be buying advertising at the moment from this particular company. We log on the call. It was the first time I was meeting this gentleman, and I immediately noticed that his virtual background was the uh, uh, famous Jerry Seinfeld living room set. So you can imagine him sitting and looking like he's on his Jerry Seinfeld couch, uh, famously in this in this setting. And we probably spent about seven or eight minutes talking about Seinfeld. Uh, yes, getting to know each other, but specifically, we did not get to his topic in time to finish the call before we needed to end. And I would consider that a fail on his behalf, because yes, maybe it was fun to talk about Seinfeld for a few minutes, but it distracted us from the conversation that he should have been having with me in order to get I guess what he wanted out of that conversation. And so my point is, is I've seen everything from the Golden Gate Bridge to the beach to, um, as I said, Seinfeld, you know, my, my message and um, observation would be to keep distractions in personal backgrounds at a absolute minimum. Um, in preparation for this, Melissa and I were going through a number of different virtual background suggestions that are all over the internet. You can find everything. Probably the best that I've seen is what looks like the bookshelf, uh, something that's very nondescript. You can't see any of the titles of the books, but it looks well organized and less cluttered. Um, you know, it, it's nothing interesting to look at. So it draws your attention back to the conversation and the person at hand. You know, it's kind of funny because when this virtual world first took us over, I remember that we were all excited for the calls, we were getting dressed, we were getting showered, we were getting shaved. And little by little, as the months went on, people were arriving to meetings with their cameras turned off. And for me, it always struck me as interesting because what I felt was that that person did not have enough respect for the meeting or for myself in order to prepare themselves as if they would be coming to the meeting in person, whether it's in our office or somewhere along those lines, to get ready for that meeting and perhaps doesn't take that meeting seriously enough or it's not important enough to present yourself on camera. So something else to think about if you're one of those uh, lately turning off the cameras and thinking that you're getting by. I personally believe that that's not sending the best message, even if it's with your coworkers, even if it's not a client meeting, but you're just trying to show your coworkers that you know, you're prepared and ready. Um, eye contact is one that I also find people struggle with. So you know, when you're on the calls and depending on which platform you're using, uh, there's, you know, little boxes in the corner, there's different people all over the screen, and there's a lot of different ways that your eyes can easily get distracted. I've had to train myself to really zero in and focus on speaking to the camera. Um, it's something that I think makes a, a much bigger impact. If we were sitting at a table across from each other right now, I would certainly not be looking at the floor, looking at the ceiling, looking at the table, my hands or anywhere else, except at your eyes. And so this is something that I think requires a little bit of um, maybe practice, but also uh, intention to definitely direct your eyes specifically at the camera in order to maintain that feeling of connection because it's so easy 
for people on the other end of a virtual call to be distracted. And frankly, I don't know if some of you at the moment are surfing Instagram, are doing work, are doing many other things, because let's face it, we are all multitasking individuals and we can manage to do many different things at once. But I definitely believe that when your eye contact is dead on, it, it, it prevents those um, desires that people will have every few minutes to check on email or to check on something else. And so I would encourage that. Um, the other one that I think is uh, interesting, um, I, I have a couple of young kids, um, as I've seen many of my colleagues and clients do as well. And in the beginning, when this virtual meeting place was starting to happen, it was a little bit cute. And I have to admit, there were a couple of times where I actually scheduled my kids to come in and kiss me on the cheek because I wanted to share a little bit of a, a human moment. But let's face it, we're seven or eight months through seeing each other's kids or hearing each other's kids or the dogs or the cats or whatever's walking around in the background. Again, it just adds to a distraction. And I would just say, if it's not something that would have happened in the meeting room or in the boardroom or in the office, then it probably shouldn't be happening here on the screen. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. I get that it's real life and I get that we don't always have the ability to prevent all of these surroundings, but my suggestion is to find a way or a place or a time for the meeting. Schedule it when you best think that you can control the surrounding environments. Um, and then lastly, and this is one that I've just adopted and uh, kind of stuck through from the beginning. When the meeting is over and there's always this kind of like race to sign off, um, I've always chosen to be the last person to leave the meeting. So I wait until everyone is disabled or the host has turned off the meeting before I rush to sign off. And I've just felt that you never know what can happen in those final seconds. There might be a, a last minute idea that you can connect with someone and still be available for. And so I really think that um, there's no rush. A couple extra seconds or even an extra minute, better to wait and see how it goes. Um, and you never know. So that's kind of my view on this virtual world from a personal presentation of your style, of your preparedness and your respect that you show both for yourself and for others that may be joining on the call. Um, and then also just some other feedback and general observations that I've had over the last few months when um, conducting business in this way. And frankly speaking, I'd love to hear if any of you have any questions or if any of you have any thoughts to share. I think it's very interesting and we can probably learn a lot from each other's experiences. So thank you. Jeff, thank you very much. Um, I know we do have some questions. I actually had a few folks send me questions before the, uh, the webinar, so I'll share some of those. Um, I know one uh, question that we've, uh, we've had um, relates more to, to women. Uh, so this new sort of casual approach, you know, we, we've talked uh, quite a bit today about um, what that means for men. Can you share a little bit of your thoughts on uh, are, are women also dressing more casually? Um, are we not wearing suits anymore? What, uh, what are your recommendations? For yeah, that? as I said before, so the presentation and the major focus for us has really been about helping men who have gone from this, you know, very strict and formal uh, uniform into they don't know what, um, because a lot of these men only had the suit and then they had their golf or exercise and they were missing this in between. Women have, have shown uh, to be a little bit more understanding, um, but I would say that the general rules if you take away the specific product items, um, the general rules apply across the board to both men and women. So, you know, yes, there were women that were of course wearing suits. Um, the idea is to casualize that suit into a way that still feels comfortable, but also professional enough. And so, you know, some of it will also depend on the, um, uh, the career or what, what the um, interaction. I had a call yesterday uh, not because I needed him, but with a defense attorney, uh, very, very, very successful criminal defense attorney, um, who's a big client of ours, a very successful defense attorney. And, you know, he confessed that, you know, he has not been in a courtroom since this started. Um, you know, it's very interesting because he would be in a suit, shirt, tie, and power briefcase kind of a look. And now he's wearing sweaters and, you know, a lot of what I described earlier. So, I, I definitely, I, I don't know if I have to give the exact specifics, but let's take women's skirts, for example. It's something that doesn't relate to men. You know, are women sitting around the couch or the dining room table doing virtual calls wearing a skirt? And, you know, what I would say is that it really depends on your comfort. I think that we all want to be comfortable while we're working from home. We've kind of 
uh, adopted this into our daily routine because let's face it, a lot of our routines, especially at this level have become about taking the meeting and then checking on the kids' schoolwork and then taking them outside for fresh air and then getting back to another call. And, you know, there's really this important balance between how do you live your daily life, but also conduct yourself professionally. So, you know, I would just relate it back in terms of for women. It's always about professional casual wear, but that's comfortable. You know, that's really the, uni the universal thought process. Great. We have, uh, we have another question from uh, one of our alums today. What colors do you think look best? Uh, that's a good meeting? question. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. So look, Color is a personal preference. Everyone has their own palettes that they enjoy and they feel confident. So, you know, one of the things that I always say about style is most importantly, if it makes you feel good, it's good, right? So fashion and style is all about how we make ourselves feel and how we're presenting ourselves. That being said, on a virtual call, when, you know, you have only eight inches to present yourself with and you're looking at a small screen, you know, I go back to the concept of less distraction, the better. So if we're talking about a bright orange with pink dots or something like that, that's certainly going to be a distraction from the conversation, perhaps maybe save that for another time or for a more casual call. Um, you can see in my, in my background, excuse me, I prefer neutrals. I like neutrals because they really work with anything. They don't, um, they don't send a strong message, but it's, it's noticeable enough that it's uh, easy to see. So I, I answer the question by, personally choosing neutrals, but of course, um, confidence and, and, and how you feel is, is equally part of that. Um, best attire for an interview. Uh, we've, yeah. we've talked a lot about you just sort of your casual day or a meeting. Do the rules change when it's a job interview? Yeah, so it's funny because I've had um, several of my friends uh, who are currently unemployed. Uh, due to the pandemic. And they've actually been asking me about this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I go back to saying for an interview, but just as important as uh, client meetings. Um, and then, you know, I don't put any less importance on my coworkers and showing myself in that respect, because you're really, you're really representing yourself in every aspect, whether it is an interview or something that's just a more day to day, you know, you can never overdress Okay, for an interview, let's just put it that way. Although you should know your audience. So, you know, I just showed you a lot of what Eleventy looks like, um, what our uh, mantra is in terms of style and this kind of relaxed casual, this elevated relaxed casual. And I remember when I was hiring for uh, an accounting position in our office, this is before virtual, this was, you know, face to face in the office and a candidate showed up. Um, he took about 10 feet into the room. He looked around and he was wearing a black suit with a white tie and like uh, a white shirt and like a tie, like very serious. And the first things out of his mouth before we could even introduce ourselves, he goes, man, did I overdress? And you could tell he felt in that instance, a bit overdressed. So I think that a lot of the same rules apply. I think taking yourself seriously, making sure that you shave, making sure that everything else is in balance is equally as important as what you wear for the interview. But I would suggest a jacket, maybe something that's less formal, but probably not the shirt and tie, even if it is an interview. I know it, it feels um, routine to think to put on the suit, the, the shirt tie, or you know, some kind of a silk blouse for women or something that's a little bit dressier. I would still try to find that middle ground that absolutely shows respect for who you're meeting with, but at the same time is appropriate for the setting that you're in. So if you're in your home, you know, is it natural to be sitting in a, in a suit and tie in your home? It, it, it may throw off the naturalness of getting to know who you are. Here's an interesting question. Do you think generational differences uh, play a role in attitudes towards attire? And do you see that changing? It's an interesting question. And I can tell you uh, from our own experience at Eleventy, um, you know, we service uh, customers from their mid twenties to mid sixties and really everything in between. Um, you know, the 60 plus feel just as young as the 30 somethings today. You know, it's really a, a mental style attitude as opposed to a, um, specifics in age. Um, I would say probably, uh, on the younger generations may not have had enough time or experience to, to learn the different, uh, regulations or different, um, 
directions for professional dressing, depending on you know their level of work experience and the type of offices that they have. I mean, I have a friend of mine who you know still consider ourselves young, and yet I see him or I would see him on the train platform every morning going into New York City, and he looked 15 years older than he actually is based on the way he was dressing, but his office was that kind of old school, you know, he followed the direction of the senior level executives and didn't want to break the mold, even if he would have liked to. Um, and recently now his office is reopened in New York City and senior levels have adopted more this 11T style of dressing. He's also followed suit and he comes to me now and he says, now I understand what you were talking about because he feels strong and professional, but he also feels comfortable in, in what he's doing. Well, it raises an interesting question. If you're um, if you're in, in in an office where um, the the executives are are following a particular style and maybe sort of something that is a little out of style now with with the formal suits, um, do you continue uh, um, to to follow that or do you start to branch off and do something a little bit more um, current? Yeah, I had a call uh, with another client of mine who owns a big law firm, and he was telling me that he was just recently looking at a photograph of himself and two of his partners at the firm, not from very long ago, and all three of them were wearing suits in the photo. And he told me he just felt ancient when he looked at the, when he was looking at themselves. You know, you have to follow the, in that case, you have to follow the desires of the office environment. I mean, you know, in our environment, we want everyone to dress to emulate our brand because mm -hmm. everything about our office, the moment you step in, is the world of. And I would encourage that from the people in our accounting to administration, logistics, they are all required to somehow exude the brand. So I would absolutely say that in that particular instance, you definitely defer to the, uh, I don't wanna say requirements, but you know, to the direction of the office itself. Okay, okay, great. All right, I think last, last question, maybe uh, we'll ask you to help us see into the future. Any um, predictions on, uh, fashion trends coming for, you know, 2021? What do you see happening? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll step back one second and then answer the future. But okay. if some of you can remember when the quote unquote sneaker trend has really swept through every department store, shoe department, where you go into these shoe departments, both men's and women's and sneakers dominate every brand presentation. And especially on the men's side, it's hard to even find a dress shoe today. And the reason for that is that sneakers have become acceptable and they're also comfortable. I don't see us going back to a moment where we're squeezing our feet into these narrow pointy dress shoes and then tying them up because we've just become so used to having this idea of comfort take over. And I do think that that, as it's now translated as I discussed, into other areas of the style. I do think that those will remain, but hopefully uh, we'll start to get a better grip on where that line is drawn between, you know, the true uh, Saturday night home movie, as opposed to the, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon virtual meeting, because that's where the big dilemma occurs is where does that line occur to, to, to separate those casual wardrobes? And frankly speaking, you know, I can tell you from my own experience, the last few years launching Eleventy as a casual sportswear brand was not always easy to convince people to buy these elevated sweaters, these elevated items of, ca of casual sportswear because they only had a purpose for Saturdays and Sundays. Well, today, these items now not only have the same purpose for Saturdays and Sundays, but they're also taking people through the week and also taking people out to dinner. And it's really become the new uh, seven day a week wardrobe. So as I started the, the conversation, we're feeling very lucky, uh, very fortunate that, you know, this, this, this new direction has kind of fallen into what we've always been doing, where I have a lot of friends in the industry, especially on the suiting side, um, that are nervous for their companies for now and for the future, especially. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, that's all the questions I have. And I think we've answered everybody else's questions. So Jeff, thank you so much. I think you gave us some insights on what we can be doing now, maybe what to expect a little bit in the future. Um, so thank you so much. And I thank you, Melissa, for inviting me. And I would just say to each of you, if any of you have uh, an interest to discuss this offline, um, you can certainly feel free to reach out to me. Melissa can either share my direct information, you can get me on LinkedIn and, and uh, many other ways. But I think that 
uh, if there were more specific questions, I'm always happy to stay connected with our U Albany uh, friends. So thank you for having me. Wonderful. Well, on that note, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.